I was building a new 2D platformer when I found an amazing crate that did a lot of what I was already trying to do, combine Bevy, LDTK, and Rapier. But even with the working prototype we put together in the last video, there was a problem. You can jump around an infinite amount of times, floating up into the sky and skipping the entire level. This was also a problem in the Bevy ECS LDTK platformer example. So I set about trying to figure out how other people solved this problem. The answer came back pretty quickly, shape casting. You may already know this technique by another name, ray casting or hit scan. In games like Fortnite, weapons can be classified as hit scan or as real projectiles. Long range snipers fire a real slow moving projectile while shorter range weapons cast rays out instantly resulting in hit scans. We can see the effects of this in bullet trails. A ray cast then is a very small point to point line that is drawn instantly and then used to find the first collider that intersects with it. If that's an enemy player, then they take damage. We can use the same technique for detecting anything, including the ground in a 2D platformer. If we cast a ray straight down from our character, we will eventually collide with a ground tile, if there's one to hit. For ground detection, what we want to do is limit the length of this ray so that if we're jumping, the ray stops intersecting with the ground. This is what prevents the player from infinitely jumping. We can do this ray cast anytime the player wants to jump to determine whether or not they should be able to jump. If their ray cast hits the ground, then they're close enough to jump. If the ray misses, then they're in the air and shouldn't get to jump again. This is mostly what we want, except that instead of casting a point to point ray, which is pretty small, we want something that represents the player's collider shape better. Enter shape casting. It's ray casting, but instead of point to point, we get to draw and move a rectangle or another shape along the ray. Shape casting in Rapier, the 2D physics library we're using for collision detection, turns out to already be implemented as a single method call, cast shape. We're using a higher level library on top of Rapier for the sandbox, so we need to go find out how to get access to the query pipeline from inside of Heron. It turns out that Heron offers a system parameter that we can access in our systems called physics world, which will give us access to the shape cast functions. Heron does rename the function to shape cast instead of cast shape, which is a little awkward, but it still works. We can define the shape we want to cast, a small flat rectangle, the starting position, the starting rotation, and the ray we want to cast to. If the shape cast collides with the ground, we let a player jump. Otherwise, we don't. This is all well and good, but one goal I have is to build a character controller as a configurable crate that I can share amongst projects. So we could potentially make this functionality a bit more composable. We also have to access the physics world to shape cast, which is okay and works, but we could potentially isolate the behavior a bit more. The more systems we have to access the physics world in, the more implicit ordering we're going to add amongst all of our ECS systems. So reducing the amount of systems that need to access physics world at the same time is a good thing, especially if that physics world is a mutable reference. This goal led to about a week's worth of back and forth between myself and the maintainer of Bevy ECS LDTK trying to find a better solution. We ended up with two new components and two new systems. The ground detection component is the primary API through which somebody would add ground detection to an entity. In this case, we add it to the player bundle which is spawned in as the LDTK player entity. When the ground detection component is added, which happens when a player is spawned, the spawn ground sensor system reacts and adds in a rigid body sensor to the same entity. The sensor sits in approximately the same location the shape cast would have gone, but it exists all the time. A sensor doesn't physically collide with the ground or other colliders. Instead, we can use it to detect when a collision would happen without actually performing a physical collision. The ground sensor then stores the set of rigid bodies that it's currently intersecting with which is what powers the ground detection. The ground detection system listens to all collision events and filters for just the collisions involving any of the sensors we've placed on the field. When a collision is sensed, we add that to the ground sensor list, and when that collision stops happening, we remove it. Every time we run the system to check for active collisions with the ground, we set the ground detection component value to true or false, based on if we have sensed any collisions. Altogether, this means we can add a ground detection component to any entity we want including players, enemies, or anything else. Each time the detection component is added, our systems manage the value for you, so all you need to do is check the relevant ground detection component value for the entity that you're checking. This is a really nice component as API abstraction that I'm finding that I'm using more and more in Bevy. In our case, if we're on the ground, our player can jump, and if not, then we prevent it. This solves the infinite jumping issue for our 2D platformer.